Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Magazine on the broadcast today. State Senator Heidi Ganser joins us. She's here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada News Magazine. Liberals Steve Sisolak and Aaron Ford. Socialism out of control. Releasing violent criminals, special interests over our children, and crippling shutdowns on small businesses. It's time for a conservative approach. Republican Tisha Black, a mom who will put our kids first, a self-made businesswoman who will stop government overreach, and Tisha backs the blue. She'll get tough on crime. Tisha Black, the conservative choice for attorney general. Politicians, they hide behind commercials and social media, trying to act tough. A bunch of keyboard cowboys. They talk tough about immigration, but none of them have locked up or deported a single violent criminal. Not one. I've deported thousands. They closed schools, tied the hands of police, and wrecked our economy. I'm Joe Lombardo. I'm running for governor because we can do better. Nevada deserves better. Let's take our state back. Joe Lombardo for governor. Jesse Haw, conservative, businessman. Jesse has a plan to take Nevada from one of the worst states for election integrity to one of the best. He'll fight to pass voter ID so everyone has to show identification to vote. And Jesse will work to make the practice of ballot harvesting a felony again. Join the fight to secure our elections. Elect Republican Jesse Haw, Nevada Secretary of State. Mark Amaday has a listening problem. We told him we were against defunding the police, COVID vaccine mandates, and eliminating fair election safeguards. Obviously, he didn't hear. He never spoke against them. But he did hear the Democrats when they granted benefits and citizenship for illegal immigrants, funded Planned Parenthood, pushed anti-gun measures, and inflationary budgets. When it comes to us, Amaday has selective hearing. My name is Danny Tarkanian. I'm running for Congress, and I approve this message. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program State Senator Heidi Gansert. She's a Republican from District 15. Pleasure to have you back on the program. Thank you. I appreciate your, your invitation. Um, the state of politics today, we're in the middle of the primary season. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Well, I think we have some very difficult primaries, um, but you know they're going to be settled in the next few weeks, really, like three, three to five weeks, and we'll see what, how the voters respond. I think many people are very concerned about the economy and are really looking for candidates who want to work uh, you know, on, on moving Nevada forward and really uh, helping to boost our economy versus the struggles that we're facing right now. What do you think about the split in both parties, where you have extremes on the right and left, and then you have more moderates in the middle? Um, how does that strike you with the way people in the electorate are talking to you about it? You know, I think we find that every election season and the difficulty in the primaries is sometimes we get folks who are on either end, the extremes, and not in the middle. And then when you move to the general, really 80% of the electorate is in the middle. And so we need to make sure that we have candidates who really represent the majority of Nevadans. But I, I think it's typical of every election cycle. Uh, you, you know, hear voices on the extremes on both sides. Um, what do you think of the governor's race at this point in time? I mean, do we have enough candidates, do you think? <laughs> There's always enough candidates. <laughs> uh, y you know, I think Lombardo is ahead. I think he's been very thoughtful in how he's presented himself. And, you know, that law enforcement background, I think, is really strong. And, and sometimes we have people who run time and time again, and, and he's, he's a fresh face in politics, at least across Nevada statewide, you know, for a statewide office. And I think people are really interested in what he has to bring to the table. I also think um, he probably has very high approval ratings in Las Vegas, given some of the situations that he's had to handle down there. So. Um, you know, a lot of, s of his supporters are hoping that uh, he can take on Steve Sisolak and win uh, in the general election. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think the Trump endorsement uh, helps or hurts him? Well, I think it definitely helps him in the primary. And I think, um, you know, in the general election, there's going to be large numbers of Republicans who turn out. I think people are really frustrated by the longevity of this, this, the emergency that we've been in and the shutdowns in the state and housing, just like numerous, numerous things that are frustrated with uh, 
where we've landed with Governor Sisolak. So I think they're looking for a change, and I think Republicans are going to show up. You know what's interesting to me is for the last few cycles, um, the national pundits as well as some pundits in the state have been talking about how we're no longer a purple state, we're moving more and more towards being a democratic state, more mm -hmm. like California. But I've never particularly seen that. And the reality is that th Nevada doesn't look like that at all at this point in time. It looks very purple, if not leaning Republican. You know, I think Nevada is purple and the pendulum swings. And when you get administrations and houses you know, that are aligned and they go too far to the left or to the right, then people push back. And I think what we're seeing is because we've had majorities in both houses and now a Democrat governor, there's been no check on, on policy, on, on the system, on the budget, and so forth. And so people are really frustrated. I also think that national politics pays a huge part in how people respond when they go to the polls, even at the very local uh, election level. And so I think there's a lot of frustration with the, uh, the Biden administration and the state of the economy right now. Um, do you feel that we are in a 2014 era where you're really going to see a red wave and a lot of people swept into office that you wouldn't normally anticipate seeing swept into office? Um, you know, I do think this looks like 2014. I think people really want a change. And again, it's from national politics all the way down to local offices. And there's just a high sense of frustration. And with the inflation at the rates that it is now, when you go to the pump, the amount of money that it costs you to fill up your pump, people just can't tolerate that. That's their quality of life is diminishing because of the state of the economy right now. And so they really are looking for a change. And so I think you're going to see a strong turnout. There is an irony, though. And the New York Times, as we taped this yesterday, had a story um, on the wealth of people who own homes, that they have seen their personal wealth because of the equity in their homes rise dramatically. Mm -hmm. And so you really have this split in the country between people who are renting and can't afford to buy a home, and people who have been lucky enough to be able to buy a home and now have tremendous equity and are still being able to spend money. What do you think about that? Y you know, I think there's a lot of frustration around that, and I think what we found is that people are competing to buy houses, and the houses that th the prices they're paying are really above sort of the affordability level for them in a lot of cases, and it's hard to put together a down payment. It's hard to save when we've got high inflation, but I also think that um, interest rates were held artificially low. And now that interest rates are starting to rise, we're going to see, a, I, I believe, we're going to see a shift in the market. So the, uh, I mean, we'll see what housing looks like in two years, but it does seem like people were probably taking out mortgages at very low interest rates, and maybe some of them were adjustable, and that the entire market might start to, to, to move because of the, the rise in uh, interest rates and the, the cost of housing. Um, now, you have a history in the banking industry because your dad has been a very famous banker in the state of Nevada for decades. Um, it, it, it seems that after the last housing crisis, mm -hmm. the, the banking system was forced to look and evaluate uh, people who are potentially looking at mortgages in a much more serious way. You didn't just have to fog up a mirror to be able to get a bank loan. You, were, you had to really go through a process. Mm -hmm. So do you think that we're looking at some kind of potential crisis in housing where people are going to lose their homes because they, they have adjustable rates that they can't um, afford? Or do you think it's going to be a little smoother than that? Well, first, I think my father would appreciate that you said that he's a famous banker. And so, yeah, my, my Le parents. Leo Sievers. Leo Sievers, he's, he's an amazing man. So uh, happy to be honored to be his, his uh, daughter. So anyway, I, th I think um, there's going to be a shift in housing. And no one wants anyone to lose their home. And so I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. And you're right. The requirements to get take out a mortgage are much stricter than they were in the past. So that should help. But we've also seen extremely low, historically low interest rates that are now going to rise. So if you've got a fixed rate mortgage, you're in a much better position. But if you had an adjustable rate mortgage, we can see some fallout from that. Um, one of the conundrums in northern Nevada especially is that the housing market is so tight because we can't build enough houses fast enough for any of the levels. So whether you're rich, medium, or poor, um, there's not enough housing. Um, uh, Mike Kazminsky uh, said uh, several years ago now that we needed 5,000 new homes a year for 10 years to be able to keep up the pace, and we've been building about 1,500. So do you see any drop in the valuation of housing because we just don't have enough housing? Well, you know, I think we're in an unusual market because I think we're, we have this um, influx of people, mainly from California, who are coming in. So the demand side is, is extremely high. 
and our supply is low. What you see when you drive around town is a lot of multifamily housing, and I think um, that supply side is going to rise and help you know, with some of that. But I do think that uh, we are one of those communities that have been discovered, and we are going to continue to see growth. Um, and I think I saw something the other day that they expect 120,000 more people to move here by maybe 2035. Right. And so we have to really be planning for that. We also have to look at our resources. What do we have as far as land? What do we have as far as water? Um, you know, how do we streamline projects that can uh, be constructed now at a local level? How do we sort of help with the permitting and the, and the streamlining? And I think the city of Reno and city of Sparks have, are both working on that probably as well as the county. So there's things that we can do to expedite housing that's queued up and ready to go, but we do have to be planning for the future. Well, another thing too is, and I don't think people really consider this, is not only are people moving here, but the mm -hmm. people who are already here have children, the children grow up, they need housing as well if you want them to stay in the community. And we don't really account for that, but that's a really large portion of you know, growth for the community as well. Sure, we've got an organic growth, right? The community itself growing up and multiplying, or and, and, and then we have an influx of people because they've discovered what a great place it is to, to live in Nevada, and particularly in Northern Nevada. All right, so you mentioned uh, the low interest rates uh, federally. Um, so, you know, for people who are savers, um, especially senior citizens, they have gotten really killed in the last few years uh, because of these low interest rates, they were getting nothing. Uh, you know, wh where were they going to put their money? Put it in the mm -hmm. stock market and gamble it away? I mean, it, it's been crazy. So they really have gotten no benefit to this. But as you start to raise interest rates, then the federal government has to pay higher interest rates as well. So do you see problems coming from this? You know, my background is not economics. <laughs> we're right. pretty much having economics. Uh, discussion. I think people on fixed income, it's been extremely difficult, and they haven't been able to find ways, sa safe ways, right? So seniors are always looking for safe ways to make some money to keep up with inflation, and I think right now it's just not happening, right? We've got a inflation of 8 plus percent, um, interest rates have been low, they're starting to rise, but we don't see what we used to see, you know, decades ago where you could put money into a CD or some sort of fixed income instrument and, and uh, successfully beat inflation and so I think uh, we've got this inequity in the market and I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out but I think the Federal Reserve plays a huge role in what that looks like and I also think policies and regulations and making sure that our economy can continue to grow and to support people makes a difference too and then you know on the housing side again is how do we build uh, projects and developments that are ready to go but we've got obstacles or we've got you know ex expenses per unit that are high that um, make those units themselves even more expensive. Well, and you also have companies that just can't get the products they need to be able mm -hmm. to produce. So the roofing industry has problems, the construction industry has problems. Um, a lot of companies that build housing are pulling back right now and saying, hey, we can't give you the pricing because we have to go back and reevaluate because the cost of steel, the cost of wood, right. cost of labor, all of that is going through the roof. Right, we've seen a downsizing of projects. You hear it time and time again because they can't afford to build what they thought they were going to be able to build because we've got the supply side issue. And you know, hopefully that will work itself out. But you know, we here, here we had COVID, which was really uh, sort of a shorter period where we had a major shutdown and then this ex extended shutdown. And so the supply side got really backed up and really damaged. And we also have less domestic production than probably we should have. And so we are at risk because of where our products um, originated. All right, let's take a break more with Heidi Gansett and we'll get away from the economics <laughs> to other topics after this time out. <laughs> Politicians, they hide behind commercials and social media, trying to act tough. A bunch of keyboard cowboys. They talk tough about immigration, but none of them have locked up or deported a single violent criminal. Not one. I've deported thousands. They closed schools, tied the hands of police, and wrecked our economy. I'm Joe Lombardo. I'm running for governor because we can do better. Nevada deserves better. Let's take our state back. Joe Lombardo for governor. Liberals Steve Sisolak and Aaron Ford. Socialism out of control. Releasing violent criminals, special interests over our children, and crippling shutdowns on small businesses. It's time for a conservative approach. Republican Tisha Black, a mom who will put our kids first, a self-made businesswoman who will stop government overreach, and Tisha backs the blue. She'll get tough on crime. Tisha Black, the conservative choice for attorney general. Jesse Haw, conservative, businessman, 
Jesse has a plan to take Nevada from one of the worst states for election integrity to one of the best. He'll fight to pass voter ID so everyone has to show identification to vote. And Jesse will work to make the practice of ballot harvesting a felony again. Join the fight to secure our elections. Elect Republican Jesse Hall, Nevada Secretary of State. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator Heidi Gansert. She's a Republican of District 15. Um, we all have a legislative session coming up after this crazy election cycle. What would you like to see being the priorities at the next election uh, or at the next uh, legislative session? Well, you know, I, I think one of the priorities that we always need to focus on is education. And we really started moving the medieval in education and then COVID happened and we reorganized the funding plan for education. But you know, one of the programs that I re really uh, pushed for and tried to make sure was secure was the Read by Third Grade program last, last session. And it's amazing the pushback around that. They kept wanting to, the Sisolak administration kept wanting to cut the money. And when you would look at our, the results as far as how our students were doing in fourth grade, we finally converged with the national average. So our students were reading at grade level or at their, con con their um, other students across the nation level, like at average, for the first time ever in the state of Nevada. So I really think we need to focus on early education and make sure kids can read. And by the way, math numbers went up. They didn't converge, but they went up along with reading. And so I think we need to focus on education. And we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We have programs that work. We need to invest in them. And we really need to lift up our children uh, and ra raise the bar versus just holding them down. And sometimes I feel like we're, we're living in the status quo and we're not willing to invest in, in the programs that we know work. Um, and again, they were looking to cut those programs, which we which were, were working. We had evidence of, their, of, of them working, and so I always get frustrated around that. Um, what are your concerns about the kids who have lived through this whole COVID experience and have mm. all kinds of issues connected to it because uh, of the social connections that were lost, uh, the social events that were lost, mm -hmm. um, whether it would be graduation, sports, or whatever. Um, you know, and I think that's gonna play big time into this election. We saw it playing uh, big time back east. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I think COVID was a huge setback for kids. We're very fortunate in Washoe County where our children still went to school. Our, our schools stayed open, we had hybrid systems. We also had private schools that were able to step up and, and keep children going. But what we've found right now is that high levels of violence, high levels of disengagement, trying to have children re-socialize you know, with each other has been difficult. And so I think it's gonna take time and I think they need support. I think they need a lot of support and I don't think it's going to be in the near term because the the isolation was prolonged and these kids are having a hard time recovering. We've been talking about mental health mm -hmm. um, in programs I've been doing for 40 years now. Um, we just don't have the number of mental health professionals. We don't have enough medical professionals, right. period. Right. Uh, but um, mental health, how do you train up a workforce like that, you, don't you have to import them to begin with and then where do you put them because there's no place for them to live? It seems like it's a big circle of problems. Right, I mean, we definitely need a, a broader, a stronger pipeline. And when you look to that, you look to higher ed, right? So you've gotta be able to invest in higher ed. And something that we've done for teachers, if we've, we've incentivized um, teaching, so there's scholarships av available, for, available for students who are doing their um, you know, in-classroom practice and and also there are scholarships available through the Nevada Teach program to help students take, sort of get a, almost like a double major. So you, you get a degree in say biology or in chemistry or in mathematics and, and there's certain majors that you can do but you also get credential to be able to teach. And so I think that when it comes over to the uh, mental health side, we need to look at social workers, we need to look at behavioral analysts and and other people and see how we can broaden that pipeline. And again, that's done through higher ed. So we need to make sure that we invest in those programs 
and we incentivize people to, to uh, students to go into those programs. Um, do we also need to change the way that we do the evaluations on these people? Um, it, it seems like the process to get a license or a certificate in these various fields is incredibly difficult in Nevada. We know it, it, it depends upon which certificate or license that you, you know you want. Some of them require a master's degree, and you have, so you have to have degrees, and then you have to have certifications and so forth. So I think it depends upon um, you know what you're talking about because in some cases there's national standards, and you've got to at least make uh, meet those mas national standards. And then there's also reciprocity. You mentioned importing people. We may need to do that, but you know what the, the driver of a lot of this is is funding. So we have to make sure that the, the pay is adequate to. Put to draw people into those positions, and sometimes they've been underpaid in the past, and so we need to make sure um, that we can, you know, support them, get broaden the pipeline, and and hire more folks in those areas. All right, let's take another break, and we'll be right back. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Politicians, they hide behind commercials and social media, trying to act tough. A bunch of keyboard cowboys. They talk tough about immigration, but none of them have locked up or deported a single violent criminal. Not one. I've deported thousands. They closed schools, tied the hands of police, and wrecked our economy. I'm Joe Lombardo. I'm running for governor because we can do better. Nevada deserves better. Let's take our state back. Joe Lombardo for governor. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with State Senator Heidi Gansett. She's a Republican of District 15. Um, as you probably know, autism has been a topic that we've been talking about on this show for many, many years. Uh, Ralph Tadre uh, headed up the Autism Coalition of Nevada and was a big uh, supporter of this program. Um, you've done a lot of work in this area as well. Can you share some of the results? Yeah, absolutely. We have so many children on the autism spectrum, it's kind of inconceivable. And, and so in 2017, I was able to create a board for behavioral um, health issues, right? So the, the folks who were in behavioral analysis and be behavioral health were actually under the psychological examiner board. And when we created our own board, they were able to streamline the processes to be able to get um, RBTs, registered behavior technicians, licensed much more easily in the state of Nevada. So we went and the, the RBTs are the people who work on the ground with children. They're the ones that you know help so many children. There, there's some oversight by higher level um, uh, in individuals like uh, people with masters and PhDs, but those are the people who work with children. And we went from having 40 in the state to well over a thousand in about three years. So being able to pay attention to how you license someone how you can get them working as quickly as possible and making sure they've got the credential they need is extremely important. And when we uh, created that board, we were able to really have a, a significant impact on those children. Do you have concerns, because this was raised at the very beginning of the autism crisis, mm -hmm. um, that you know parents were the responsible ones for the kids, but what happens down the road when the parents pass on? Um, who takes care of the kids then? Because there's a, a, a substantial number of, of kids with autism who are never going to be able to function normally in society. But we don't seem to have really dealt with that portion of the problem at this time. 
You know, I think it's really difficult. Um, I have some friends who have children with a, a child with disabilities in Southern Nevada, and they've got Opportunity Village. And you know what I know down there is they actually have an apartment complex. So they live semi-independently, but they're in this secure environment. And I don't know what we have up here in Northern Nevada, but that is a concern because we have these, these individuals who are fairly independent, but not fully independent, and we need to make sure that we have systems in place to help them. And you know, mostly when you look at care for individuals, it's always most effective and less expensive if it's like home care versus institutions or large, you know, buildings. And so trying to figure out what we can do for those people so that they can live as independently as possible, but still have security and a safety net is important. And a big shout out to my friend Bob Brown, uh, mm -hmm. who runs Opportunity Village and who is one of the good guys of all time in our state. Yeah, amazing. Uh, Thank you, as always, for being here. So many things to talk about, so it just means come back and have another discussion soon. Thank you. I really appreciate being here. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Liberals Steve Sisolak and Aaron Ford. Socialism out of control. Releasing violent criminals, special interests over our children, and crippling shutdowns on small businesses. It's time for a conservative approach. Republican Tisha Black. A mom who will put our kids first. A self-made businesswoman who will stop government overreach. And Tisha backs the blue. She'll get tough on crime. Tisha Black, the conservative choice for attorney general. Politicians, they hide behind commercials and social media, trying to act tough. A bunch of keyboard cowboys. They talk tough about immigration, but none of them have locked up or deported a single violent criminal. Not one. I've deported thousands. They closed schools, tied the hands of police, and wrecked our economy. I'm Joe Lombardo. I'm running for governor because we can do better. Nevada deserves better. Let's take our state back. Joe Lombardo for governor. Jesse Haw, conservative, businessman. Jesse has a plan to take Nevada from one of the worst states for election integrity to one of the best. He'll fight to pass voter ID so everyone has to show identification to vote. And Jesse will work to make the practice of ballot harvesting a felony again. Join the fight to secure our elections. Elect Republican Jesse Hall, Nevada Secretary of State. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Do you play golf? The Optimist Club of Reno is hosting the inaugural Ray Pezzanella Memorial Charity Golf Tournament on June 3rd at the Lake Course at Red Hawk Golf and Resort. For more information, go to pezgolf.org. Funds raised go to benefit local children's programs. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. With Nevada's only transplant center and verified burn center, the science is here. With award-winning cardiologists and the state's only dedicated heart failure clinic, the talent is here. With Nevada's most advanced robotic surgery, the technology is here. And with the Silver State's only designated pediatric trauma center, hope is here. All because we are here. UMC. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, nevadanewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.